On New Year's Day, my friend asked me, So Neil, what's your New Year's resolution? I tried to think of some kind of generic answer that most people would want to hear. But only one thing came to mind. I want a full planche. Hey everyone, today I'm going to tell you how I plan to have the full planche in one year. Well, in a sense I kind of already do have a full planche. Nah, I'm just kidding. So after four years of dedicated planche training and only getting a straddle planche, I decided to review my routine and start to implement non-ego based strategies to achieve my goal. So the main thing I'm emphasizing here is progressive overload. As long as I'm improving weekly and I don't get any injuries, I'm happy. So I train push and pull three times a week and I do six exercises which I do in pairs and I do as supersets. So the first one is a planche progression followed by a front lever progression. Then it's a dynamic lean to planche followed by the advanced tuck front lever pull-ups. And lastly, we have Maltese leans finished off with pseudo planche push-ups and also a one arm chin-up progression. So as this is a planche video, I won't be talking about the pull side of the workout. We won't be focusing on the push side. So I follow this calisthenics coaching company called Stenix on Instagram. And I think they're one of the best coaches out there for calisthenics. Although uh, at this point in time, I myself can't afford to hire them, but I follow them and I follow some of the athletes they train. And luckily they make some pretty comprehensive posts about their progress and also the plan to get the progress. So I'm basing my own progress around what I see from them. So the athlete in question that I'm showing you right now is coach Marcus De Costa. He's a super strong guy and he's achieved a very, very high level in pull and also he's achieved his full planche. Going through his posts, I noticed he had a high volume of advanced tuck and he only progressed to the next progression once he had achieved like six sets of nine seconds advanced tuck. And so that's the goal I'll aim for before I move on. So what he did afterwards is the one leg straddle planche and even in this progression, they still implement the advanced tuck. So I think it shows how important it is. Afterwards, he moved on to the straddle planche and also they kept the advanced top. I noticed that they do implement bands in their training, but the thing is where I live right now and uh, the fact that I only have one thin band, it's not really possible for me to use band assisted planche training. So hopefully I can find ways to work around that and you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And afterwards, he got a full. And right now, he's still training the band assisted full, even though he already has a full. So for my second exercise, which is the dynamic lean the planche, uh, my reasoning behind this is that for the four years of my planche journey, I have not tried any dynamic planche exercises. And after reading some comments in my previous planche video, and also just watching tons and tons of YouTube videos that recommend it, I'm gonna implement this in my current workout. So it may not look like I'm getting much out of this, but my shoulders are definitely burning, they're working, and I believe I'm getting enough volume with the amount of repetitions I can do. So the end goal would be to hold this for a couple of seconds before coming back down, slow and controlled. The last exercise for me would be Maltese leans, to improve my tendon strength as I've been injured before and therefore I need to put in some extra effort for that. So how do I actually know that I'm targeting my tendon? So with this amount of lean that I'm currently doing in this progression, my muscles aren't really taxed, but I can feel like a huge load, mostly here, the lateral side of my elbow, and that, that was where I was injured before. So I think I'm on the right track. And after this, I supplemented with pseudo planche push-ups to teach me to strengthen my protraction even when I'm in a tired, weakened state. Uh, in other words, training my endurance. So I currently implement a four week long program followed by a one week deload for instant repeat. I gradually build up the volume until I peak in the fourth week and I try to progress with every session and it's going good so far. If I can't progress by the number of seconds, then I'll try to progress by the number of sets. So let's say I start with three times five. If the next session I can't do three times six, instead I'll build up to four times five, then five times five. And by that time I should be able to do three sets of six seconds. 
and I just keep going up until I reach my goal for that certain progression. So for the advanced stock plunge, it is currently six sets of nine seconds. So this seems to be going good so far. My straddle punch is improving even though I'm not even directly training it. I'm only focusing on getting my advanced tuck holds longer and cleaner. So the key is progressive overload. Eventually you'll get there without even realizing. But at this point in time, I'm just grateful to be able to hold a clean straddle planche. We're almost at the end of the video, but before that, let me give a shout out to the Gravity Destroyer Street Workout Discord. They're a calisthenics discord community who's very welcoming of athletes of all levels. Click the link in the description below and join the discussion. So that's it for now. Tune into the next video to see how my housemate slash friend achieved the front lever without training for months. It's more complicated than you think. Until then, I'll see you guys.